Good day, everyone. Today, I am going to introduce a theory called lexical phonology. I would like to call it an interplay of morphology and phonology as well. Before we get to know what it is, I would like to remind you of generative grammar because lexical phonology partly contradicts some ideas of that theory. Herox proposed the following schema on which we can observe the process by which phonological component is ultimately yielded. The schema indicates that the phonological component comes after a word is put into a sentence structure. However, this concept is inconsistent with what lexical phonology suggests. In the following schema, phonology intervenes between lexicon and syntax. This means that before a word is inserted into a sentence, it gets to pick up some phonological property first. We can call this the interplay of phonology and morphology. When a word undergoes some morphological alteration, such as conjugation, it gets some phonological property at the same time. The morphological and phonological alterations do not occur independently. One noticeable idea of lexical phonology is cyclic phonological rule. Cyclic means recurrent in this case. When a word undergoes derivation and becomes a derivative, it can still pick up another derivational affix thanks to this rule. When this rule applies, the derivative is liable to have undergone stress shifts as well. According to Sejo and Allen, the suffixes and prefixes in English can be classified into two levels, level 1 and level 2. What might capture your attention should be the plus and hash signs. The first indicates that the affixes can be added to both words and bound roots, while the latter indicates that the affixes can be only added to words. Let's take a look at some examples. The word regular and regulate have level 1 suffixes, all and eight. Note that R is an alteration of all because of dissimilation phenomenon in phonology. The word irregular and semi-regular both have prefixes belonging to different levels. The word regularize contains a level 2 suffix. What we can further observe from the examples is that those with level 2 affixes have their affixes added to words, unlike in regular. In the word regular, rag is not a word but merely a bound morpheme. Now, let's see what a model of lexical phonology is. A word that had undergone any derivation now undergoes level 1 morphological and phonological alterations. On level 1, the word may pick an affix or undergo irregular inflection, for example, an ox becoming an oxen as in its plural form. At the same time, it may undergo stress shift. The words regular and regularity both belong to level 1 suffixation, but have different stress positions. Trisyllabic shortening and velar softening are also possible during level 1 phonology. As it moves on to level 2, it undergoes level 2 derivation by picking up suffixes such as eyes or nis. It might undergo regular inflection such as in speak and speaks. Compounding belongs to level 2 morphology too, and during compounding, the primary stress of the compound word is reconsidered. Lastly, there are four things the lexical phonology model can explain. The first is the possibility of affixation. We can make no such word as Adam lessity because no level 2 affix can precede level 1 affix. The second is that we can clarify the relation between the compounding and inflection. The compound noun, walkman, contains man, so we may guess its plural form being walkman. However, compounds may not undergo the same inflection process as their components. The plural form of walkman is walkmans. Because level 2 affixation compounding occurred, no level 1 morphological alterations like irregular inflection can further occur. Thirdly, lexical phonology gives us a clear idea of the directionality of conversion. 
when we are struggling in a debate to determine whether the word protest or protest started as a verb or a noun, we can look to this model. Because the verb to noun conversion is level 1, while noun to verb conversion is level 2, we can conclude that the noun protest derived from the verb protest. The last one is that we see some regular derived forms are blocked. Oxus is unlikely because oxen is a more marked, less regular plural alteration of this word. We call this elsewhere condition. By this rule, more regular forms are adopted only when irregular forms are inadequate for derivations. Also, when it comes to cook as a verb, we can say that a word that means a professional who does cooking is not a cooker, but a cook. This is also because level to morphological affixation or addition is unlikely after conversion. That was all I addressed throughout the lecture. Thank you for attention.